Welcome to the Yeshiva University Library's Virtual Open House. I am Moshe Shapiro, a reference librarian at the Goddesson and Library. We actually all together represent three libraries, the Hetty Steinberg Library at the Midtown Campus, which supports both general and Judaic studies for Stern College for Women, the Pollock Library at the Uptown Campus, which supports the undergraduate programs in general studies and the Wurzweiler School of Social Work, and together with Hetty Steinberg, supports the Katz School of Science and Health. And my library, the Mendel Gottesman Library, also at the Uptown Campus, which supports undergraduate Jewish studies, the Bernard Revel, Revel Graduate School, and the Azrieli Graduate School. Our libraries exist as physical spaces in which students, faculty, and staff can come to study and do research. And we are going to be sharing with you some exciting news about the renovation of the Hetty Steinberg Library, plus wait till the end of this session, of some beautiful pictures of what the library will look like when the renovations are finished. But the libraries are also made up of virtual spaces and university-wide activities of interest, some of which we are going to introduce to you today. There will be five speakers who will each briefly describe some of these exciting programs and new developments within the libraries, which should be of interest to the greater university community. After all the speeches, there will be time for questions. I encourage you to use the chat feature it's located at the bottom of your, Zoom, of your Zoom screen to input your questions, and then I will direct the appropriate question to the appropriate person. Our first speaker is Eleanor Grumet, who is the reference and instruction librarian for the Hetty Steinberg Library, who will be discussing some of the innovative techniques the library has been using to make our services accessible to students, faculty, and to all our patrons inside and outside the university. Hi, thanks for joining us. Let me start by telling you about some services the library performs for students and faculty that you may not be aware of. First, one of the most satisfying parts of a reference librarian's job is teaching library classes. The librarian actually makes a presentation to the class based on the instructor's particular assignment. We've been doing it online virtually now since last March, but in the past and the future, we hope to return to face-to-face uh, -face teaching. The subject of the presentation is how to use the library and it's tailor-made for the course. We work closely with faculty on that. Then there's the personal librarians program. Every entering freshman gets a letter from a reference librarian who's been matched with him or her in an area uh, of study that, uh, is, that they share. And uh, the letters are followed by follow-up letters over the course of the student's career. Um, we put a human face on the library. So uh, it's not just a place with books and study spaces, but where the people here is welcoming, it's, it's inviting to come. If you know some students, who remind them that the library has a, a, a reference librarian waiting for them uh, at any moment they can come. Then there's the Student Research Award. Any undergraduate can submit a research paper written for a course in the past year with at least five cited sources. The prize is $250 and a framed certificate, which is presented at a ceremony, um, which, uh, which all, all uh, staff and faculty on the campus who have published in the past year are invited to attend. A panel of seven librarians uh, are the judges, and we've had winners these past three years in political science, public health, and psychology. If you know any talented students, let them know that the deadline for submission is April 12th. And we're here to serve you as well. You have access to over 1 million print volumes in all our libraries aggregate, not to mention DVDs, uh, online journals, and eBooks. You already have your library card, which is Yeshiva University ID. You should also know if there are young people in your life that the Hetty Steinberg Library has a really superb collection of children's books, both secular and Judaic. If you have a question of any kind for us, you can contact us by email or phone, or since the pandemic started by live chat. Since last March, when we began the service, we've had over 862 chat questions. Also very popular now are one-on-one -on -one Zoom interviews. We're very accessible. Let me take a minute to show you uh, our screen, the library screen, uh, how you can access these different services. A 
Okay, this is the library homepage. This is the go-to place for everything having to do with the library. Um, as you can see at the bottom here, there is somebody actively involved on chat as we, as we speak. If you click on that link, you, you get a box. You can just enter your question here. For all forms of contact with us, hidden up in the upper right-hand corner is the Ask Us link. Okay, you can either do chat, and it gives you reference hours for when someone is manning the chat uh, screen. Okay, you can call us. Here are our phone numbers. By email, you can send us an email. There's a form to fill out with your question. Okay. Okay, and then there are some, you know, questions, other questions you may have that frequently asked, and you can get the answers right here. Okay. Um, one of the services we provide now uh, is grab and go, um, which means that it, you don't have to come into the library. You can let us know you want a book. We get it ready for you, put it in a bag, you show up and you grab it and you go. If you want to submit a grab and go request, you just fill out the form here. Okay. And one last service I want to tell you about is interlibrary loan. Okay. Interlibrary loan is great if you don't, if Yeshiva does not have a, an item that you want, we can get it from anywhere in the United States and even some foreign libraries. So that's how to do that under services interlibrary loan. Okay. So next I'm going to hand the baton over to my colleague uptown, Shulamis Hess, who wears many hats, and she'll speak to you about our popular library book talks some databases of interest, and she'll address a, uh, something glaringly missing from my presentation, which is how you will find a book or article in our collection. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We launched our first book talk at, four years ago. It was at the YU Farm sale, and it featured Jeffrey Gorak. Cut to 2021, now we have at least three book talks per semester. The topics range from children's literature to philosophy to personal memoirs. To get a taste of some of our offerings, you can check out the library blog, which of course is on the YU library homepage. As Eleanor mentioned before, this really is your stop to find everything library related. Some of the things I'm gonna cover include databases and research guides. This part, the part of the page that I'm focusing on now is the middle. This is where you're gonna search whatever it is. So if you put your cursor here and the ta whatever tab is highlighted, that's what you're searching. I'm gonna put you find aside for now because I wanna, search, I wanna focus on databases. We have close to 300 databases. It's unbelievable. Some of you may be familiar with some of them such as Academic Search Complete or JSTOR, but why limit yourself to what you know? Check out the subjects. You can browse by subject and starting with art, architecture, and music down to Wurzweiler resources and everything in between. Of course, I'm not going to cover all of them right now, uh, although I would love to. <laughs> and let's take a look at one in particular that I find particularly fun. It's Ancestry Library. Some of you may know this of this because it has genealogical information, but it has so much more than that. You could just tell from some of the icons. You can go, you can find census records back to 1790, vital records of all sorts. And there are historical maps, photos, documents. I decided to take a whirl and to give this a whirl and search, not my ancestors, but my husband's parents who have since passed away. I'll make it a little bigger. You can see that by the font, you know, what kind of um, dot matrix printer they used in those days. This is a passenger list, unbelievable. This was put together, look at this, March, 1940. That's when they came over from Germany. They have the same last name as mine, Hess, Walter and Julie Louise. They give you the, the ages that they were at the time, their professions, the, the languages they spoke, and even, of course, where they came from, and even the port that they went via. Really fascinating. 
Another database of note, which I alluded to before, is called UFIND, which is the, which, as I said, is the default search on the homepage of the library. You will not forget that you should go home anytime you need anything library related. Okay. As it says here, you're finding articles, books, and ebooks in one search. And it's even more than that. It's encyclopedic um, entries. And let's take a look. Instead of me giving you a speech about it, let's see what we can do with it. So I decided to search a topic that I think is interesting to others and it's nutrition. Let's see what we can find about nutrition. Now, I did this search last night and I saved it and you can just jump to it. So normally you would be typing it, but I, I did it ahead of time. Now, just like when you search for something online, you're going shopping online, right? And you find a lot of weird results and you want to filter it. You can do the same thing and you find. So, and by the way, this is like a mega search engine. This isn't just one database. This contains many, many databases, many journal articles, many eBooks. So here we are in our filter. And we could just say, I only want academic journals or eBooks or news articles, or you could choose a few. And there's so many more source types if you click show more, you can limit by language. You could also even say you want a certain date range, which I actually did. Now you might notice I wrote nutrition sedentary adults. Not that I'm referring to anybody um, on the Zoom, <laughs> at the Zoom um, webinar. Um, but in case you know of sedentary adults that need nutrition advice, then you could search it here. I wrote not older adults because I found that some of my results were heavy on the um, elderly. Okay, moving right along, we have another resource that we offer and it's called LibGuides or Research Guides and you find it from the research help menu. One in particular that I want to point out is about COVID-19. And let me find it here. Oh, I have to bring it up again. Hold on. The uh, search share is a little slow. Here we go. Okay, Wendy Kostikov together with Tina Weiss put together this amazing thorough guide back in the beginning of the pandemic. Of course, it gives you COVID-19 information, vaccine, whatever, but it's so much more. As it's stated, as it's stated here, it's listings for free and interesting things you, you can do while stuck indoors. So I'll let you explore this on your own, but just certain things I wanna point out. If you wanna see a free performance, you know, you don't have to spend money on a ticket, just watch it here. You wanna to go to a museum, go, to here, go here. You wanna learn about how to de-stress or some um, exercises you can do when you can't get to your gym, go to well-being. I'm now gonna pass this um, part of the program to Stephanie Gross, who is our e-reserves and scholarly communication librarian. And share screen. Full screen. Hi everyone, uh, it's me, Stephanie, and I'm going to take you through a lightning tour of the Yeshiva Academic Institution Repository, fondly known as Yair, which means we'll give light or will enlighten in Hebrew. It was rolled out in May of 2018, and it is actually an online collection or a treasure trove of academic work created by faculty, students, and staff with the goal of elevating the standing of YU as an academic institution in the academic and cultural world to increase pride among faculty, students, and alumni who are major donors, of course, and to engage with a global audience. All this per the YU strategic plan. So the commonly thought of examples would be journal articles, books, book chapters, and media such as recorded book talks and recorded interfaith series uh, between faculty and people from outside YU. The most recent uh, endeavor has been um, 
Crisis and Hope, Why You Voices. But we have other delightful offerings. Look here at the top, podcasts that can be streamed right from your ear, student journals and newspapers, both from the male and female contingents, Yeshiva College and Stern College, creative work, art, and fiction. Now, this is very important, works in progress from any of you who are working in STEM or working in labs or working in the sciences, research data reports and charts. BA honors theses, MA theses and doctoral dissertations and departmental and institutional publications such as reports and newsletters. We get many of this from the Yeshiva University Office of um, admissions, affairs, uh, the provost. So one major question that you're probably asking is what can your ear do for me and for why you? Well, first and foremost, it stores and showcases intellectual output, but it also provides an easy permanent link for sharing work globally on your CV and social media. And of course, everyone knows how important it is to share your work, not only on the outside with uh, platforms such as academia, but with why you uh, and as an institution for which you work. All right, let's meet some participating at your communities. We have the Revel School of Judaic Study and the Cass School of Science, just to mention some of the very well known in a very long list here of communities. And we also have newcomers such as the Fish Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies and the Arthur Schneer Program for International Affairs. You don't see your department, just give us uh, an email, uh, uh, email a note or you can contact me uh, with uh, the right phone number. Here's an earlier podcast, which we um, gleaned from the web. Uh, it was archived in a manner of speaking, and now it's streaming directly from your ear. This is also, again, topics on Judaism from our faculty. A more recent example is the Crisis and Hope Why You Voices that I mentioned earlier. But look, it's a collaborative effort between three different departments. And on your ear, it is noted under each of those departments. So one is the graduate school, but then you do have centers and you have institutes. This is a recent talk. It can be streamed directly from your ear. Uh, this one has to do with equity and inclusion. This is an example of a book talk by an Asriali faculty member. She wrote a book, a children's book, as someone mentioned earlier. And this can be, again, accessed and played directly, whether you have a Mac, an Android device, handheld, uh, all of this is very easy to use. This undergraduate students have been producing for a number of years, a beautiful fine arts journal. This particular issue was is called Divine Chaos. It has art and fiction, a very exciting initiative by the student body last year during COVID was to publish online, born digital uh, journal called Community, which focuses on public health. And another one called um, Speech and Pathology um, from another student organization. And both these journals, if I understand correctly, are uh, supported by the Office of Student Life amongst others and some of the deans. Okay, a perennial favorite has always been the commentator Yeshiva College's newspaper. This has been digitized going all the way back from 1936 mm -hmm. from the microform. Uh, another uh, new favorite has come up not just by uh, YU faculty and students, but by users from abroad, as far away as Israel and Spain, requesting items, theses, and dissertations to be digitized and made public. And if we can, 
we have been doing this, it's on demand. This is a faculty interview with a Stern professor named Dr. Jill Katz. She's at Tel es Safi, an archeological dig. It can be easily streamed from uh, the YouTube channel through Yair. A good way to learn about Dr. Katz, her delivery style and herself as faculty. The YU Office of Admissions have chosen the Women in Science Student Journal to market their science programs. We're very excited that our uh, run uh, is basically full and it goes back into the early 2000s. How can you share your work on your ear? Well, we made a LibGuide and it has uh, tabs, pages, on sub submission, content distribution, copyright, et cetera, and frequently asked questions. This is a picture of myself and you can easily email me or you can set up a consultation. Now, a highlight of our year is um, getting together and publishing a catalog of Yeshiva University authors, which includes citations to journal articles, books, book chapters, and presentations. The mission and scope of the catalog is to record lively discussions, reflect creative vitality, to cite evidence and research, and to document campus life. This is an example of a typical uh, page in the catalog. We give a thumbnail sketch and we give uh, the contributor with their affiliation and a proper citation. And we even have citations referring to um, media as well. So I thank you and I'm going to turn over the mic now to Sandy Moore who will tell us more about ebooks, purchasing and the like. Hi, uh, thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, so again, my name is Sandy Moore and I'm the head librarian at the Pollock Library. Um, I've got two topics to discuss with you today and share with you. The first of those is um, OER and a project that Yeshiva University is working on with Lyricists. So uh, a quick definition, OER means it stands for Open Educational Resources. And these are teaching and learning and research materials that are either in the public domain or licensed in a manner that provides everyone with free perpetual permission. OER is typically free or of low cost to students and can come in many formats. Traditionally, it replaces traditional textbooks, um, but it could also be uh, journal articles and other instructional materials, worksheets, tests, you name it. So this past semester, we've been working with Lyricis which is an academic library consortium on the alternatives projects, which is helping faculty use OER in their courses so that students can save money on textbooks. We've already won a pilot of the program with a marketing instructor at YU, and we went through her syllabus and her learning objectives, and we helped her find materials so that her students would not have to purchase a textbook. Um, this past week, uh, me and several other librarians met with um, university faculty, college faculty from liberal arts colleges and community colleges um, all over the country, as well as other librarians. So we're partnering with people outside of YU to work on this project as well. Um, we have several other YU faculty that will be joining in this project with us. Um, additionally, we've really had a big year for ebooks um, since the pandemic hit and we were closed uh, for a while, we, we definitely shifted our focus to purchasing more ebooks, which also meant that we needed more textbooks as ebooks. Um, trying to navigate that budget wise has been pretty tricky. Um, unfortunately, a lot of publishers don't allow libraries to purchase textbooks because of our lending policies, but whenever possible, we do try to make those available for students. Um, and it's so much easier if you have a group of 13 students, we have unlimited access um, to help them gain access to their eBooks and their textbooks. Um, I know those of you that might work in student services or admissions and advising sometimes reach, us, reach out to 
librarians about helping students get ebooks. Um, and I encourage you to do that. We're always there to support them. And hopefully going forward, this OER project will significantly lower the cost of textbooks for students. Um, I am going to now turn this over to Rena, who has some lovely photographs to show us of the remodel going on at the downtown campus. Thank you so much, Rena. Hi, um, I'm Rena. I am one of the reference and instruction librarians here at the Hetty Steinberg Library on the Barron campus. And I will describe a bit about the renovation that um, is in the works. Um, so first I'll talk about plans for the Hetty Steinberg Library. And then I'll mention a little bit about some potential opportunities for um, Uptown for Goddessman and Pollock. Um, so we have plans for a renovation and it includes a number of goals. Um, so firstly, a dedicated classroom. So right now the classes have taken place um, either in the classroom themselves or classrooms themselves or um, in one of our smaller study rooms, if it's few enough students, um, or well, right now everything is over Zoom anyway, um, but the plan is to have within the library a dedicated classroom so that the students can come to the library and get the tour and look around and then also have their information literacy session um, in the library itself. Um, and then also part of the, Goal is to increase the amount of study space, um, newer carols and things like that, and to add some seating areas. Um, and then computer flat screens sort of designed so that the students can collaborate together while studying. Um, they can share the same flat screen and work together. Um, and part of this also is aesthetic changes um, like cosmetic appearances. So those are the goals of the renovation. Um, sort of as part of this, we had to make some space, um, like for the dedicated classroom that I mentioned and for the extra study space. Um, so we undertook a large scale collection weeding project, um, which we would have you know, liked to work on anyway, but this was sort of an added impetus. Um, we went through and we um, update, you know, we saw what needs updates. We removed some of the older materials or less needed materials um, and, Part of this, um, we worked on in consultation with the faculty. Um, so together, like sending them lists and you know them looking through the, our materials and you know providing input about the collection. Um, so again, so we we um, did this collection weeding project to help us with space for the renovation. Um, and now I'll show you some of what the renderings look like um, that we have from the architect. Um, they're not exact; like changes still um, could be made. Um, but for now, this is what we have. Um, so you can see here, um, you would walk in and there would be what, where now the reserve desk is. So reserve textbooks, um, textbooks that circulate for two hours and designed for a class so that um, the students can share them. Um, this, so this desk would um, replace that current desk. And you could see, if you've seen the current library, you see, you know, it has a very different look. Um, and it's just like an open welcoming space. And then here is um, also sort of when you first walk in, but to the left, you see um, a ref reference desk and that's where the reference librarian would sit and the reference librarian provides assistance to students like helping them find resources and helping them with citations for their research work, um, help like that. So that would be the reference desk on the left. And then you could see these um, chairs, like these white modern looking chairs. Um, that's, you know, additional seating space. Um, and then here you could see, um, firstly, you could see the windows. Um, those are currently there and they will be maintained um, and sort of highlighted just as a nice aesthetic feature of the library. Um, and you could see in the background, the glass doors, that would be the dedicated classroom. And then when not in use, it would serve as more study space. And you could see then there's the shelving areas for um, what would be the Judaic studies reference collection. Um, and the general studies reference collection, which is currently there, would be moved downstairs where the periodicals are and 
those would be moved elsewhere. Um, so things have shifted around a little bit for space purposes. Um, but so you can see, you know, modern, updated um, kind of look, and, and that's what the architect has in mind. Um, and then just Pollock and Gottesman, so potentially some upgrades up for consideration. Um, they are thinking about maybe um, adding in some 3D printing, um, some digital media labs, um, video conference stations in the group study rooms so that uh, to facilitate group, group study, um, and then collaboration hardware and software also to facilitate group study. Um, and so the goal, um, the intent of the renovation so that it enhances the library space both aesthetically as well as functionally. 